A team of Australian-based scientists has been working on a spacesuit that might be able to help astronauts' bodies readjust when travelling between different planets. Spending time in zero gravity can have adverse impacts on the body and plenty of time is needed to acclimatise. Dr Gordon Waddington is a neuroscientist and physiotherapist. He's conducting tests on the spacesuit created in Australia and he joins us now from Batemans Bay, not far from now actually, on the New South Wales South Coast. Gordon, g'day. So first of all, you're involved in the testing of this suit. Describe this suit for us. Thanks, Joe. And yes, I'm coming from Walbanga country on um, the south coast. Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, microgravity is very effective at um, doing a lot of things to us humans over a period of time. It reduces muscle strength, it reduces bone strength. It has a whole lot of other things that happen with changes in fluid in your body. And the particular area I've been interested in for some time has been how good you are at feeling small differences in movement. You're, I mean, if you're sitting down at the moment, you might be able to feel, uh, concentrate on your, sh on your feet. You can feel your socks and your shoes and so on and so forth. You don't normally do that um, and you walk around quite, you know, quite comfortably. This is really important though when, when we go into microgravity because what happens is you actually lose that sense over time because you're not using it. Our brains are incredibly good at replacing any bit of real estate in the brain that isn't being used at the time. As well as that, the, the, the suits that we're working with are um, uh, uh, collaborators based in, in Melbourne in Australia, looking at uh, being able to put different loads on different parts of the body to simulate what happens when you're in microgravity. And so these suits are kind of like compression suits that athletes wear at the moment, are they? That's exactly right. The, um, the company based in Melbourne and is uh, working out of RMIT uh, produces a suit that looks at it's, it's individually tailor-made for the body shape of the person it's wearing on. It provides a certain amount of compression, which helps to keep uh, obviously different um, and different levels of compression at different parts of the body. So that stimulates different amounts of um, fluid and blood flow in those areas. Um, what we've developed in Canberra in our part of the collaboration is a particular component of the suit that's on the inside of the suit. That's what we call a tactile surface that stimulates the skin of the foot and the ankle, which every time you move your toes, your foot, then you get a, an increase in stimulation through, through that area of the body. The really nice thing about this is it actually has carryover onto Earth because uh, this is the, the, the company that's part of this, and I do have to put my hand up as a conflict of interest there as, as part of that, as a founder of that company here in Canberra. Um, that does have impact for falls prevention, for instance, you know, older persons and so on. And so you've mentioned that this suit uh, like mimics um, uh, loads on different parts of the body, but if you're wearing a compression suit up in space, and uh, w wouldn't it th be the case that that suit would only provide um, uh, some weight on a particular part of the body uh, and not others while you're wearing that suit? And so does, would the astronaut have to ch change compression suits frequently to get loads on different parts of the body to share it around a bit? Well, the trick with this suit is to try as much as possible to simulate those different loads um, as you within the suit itself. So, for instance, if, if you're standing up or sitting up and you lift your arm up now, gravity is resisting your lift of your arm. So uh, what the team at Human Aerospace have done has put some straps, if you like, woven into that surface of the suit that resist that movement when the astronaut lifts their arm. So it doesn't matter if they're upside down or lying on their side, that will still occur because, of course, there is no up or down in space. Similarly with what we're doing with the, um, with the stimulation to the foot and the, and the sole of the foot. Every time you move in the suit, um, you will get some stimulation. You've, you've probably seen photos of people in the um, uh, in International Space Station. They tend to move around using their hands yeah. and their feet, the feet stay still behind. When they log on to a, um, uh, yep, when they log on to a, um, uh, a computer or something, they'll actually slide their feet into a Velcro um, strap to hold them in place. Otherwise, they'll just drift off when they started typing in the keys on the on the uh, uh, on the computer that we're working on. Every time they do that, though, every one of those movements, it will simulate to some extent what we do down here in gravity on normal, what we call one G here on Earth. Mm. It's quite a trick to make that work though. Yeah, and so compression suits have actually been worn up in space for, for several years in some form. What are the early signs yep. of its effectiveness? 
Well, the only well, what what the, the way this is measured is we know when somebody comes back from an extended period of time, and again, uh, most people will have seen people being helped out of capsules uh, when they've landed. Um, most commonly, recently on land, they're going to start water landings again shortly, uh, and you'll see one or two people lifting them under the shoulders st and steadying them as they move around. When they come from that situation, within 24 hours, they're moved to a site where they can actually be tested and you can actually measure the difference in their ability compared to when they, uh, when they got, in the, got in the rocket ship to take off in the first place. So we measure those differences and any suit that we're using, any intervention that we're using, will be trying to reduce that difference from the start. So a perfect situation would be no change at all. But um, the reality is gravity is, you know, when you're in microgravity, it's 24 hours a day and everything, the brain is so good at rearranging itself that it's, it's, it's um, quite, a, quite a battle to, to try and prevent those changes. Yeah, cool. Be interested to follow your progress with this. Okay, Gordon Waddington, thanks so much for having a chat to us. Thanks very much for having me on. Thank you.